Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and time for another repair video. So what we've got today is a copy of Pokemon Yellow for the Nintendo Game Boy. Um, I bought this on eBay quite a while ago and I've only recently been able to go and pick it up. Um, but it was sold as non-working, so I want to test out, see what's going on with it. So I've got my Game Boy Advance. Let's throw it in here. Turn it on. Okay, so we are getting the N Nintendo logo, which is good. That means it is reading the cartridge. But we're not going anywhere from there. Interesting. Again, Nintendo, okay, going to white screen, and nothing. Let's try one more time. Third time's a charm, right? No. It's not even switching from, uh, like, the full screen to the 4.3 or 3.3, three, whatever it is. I guess square. That's probably just square. 1.1. Um, one, one. Regardless, so... Clearly not booting up, so let's bust this open. Let's see what's happening here. So, first thing we need to do take out the security bit on the back and see what we've got. Okay, so pins don't look too bad. Um, first thing I notice, we may be missing a capacitor here at C5. Don't know if that picks up. Yep. Um, but other than that, it doesn't look too bad. Just out of curiosity, I want to grab a working copy of Yellow just to see if that's populated on the board. Alright, so I'm going to get my own copy of Pokemon Yellow. Let's give it a quick test. And we are booting into the system. So we know that this does work. Let's just take a look, see what we've got here. So, tested working is on the right, non working on the left. It does look like everything is populated properly. So, C5 has nothing on either board. So we are good here. So I'm going to put this back together, put it away so I don't get them mixed up. Okay, so first things first. <clears throat> We're going to give these pins a little bit of a clean, so let's zoom in a touch. Okay, so all I'm going to do, using just a plain old pencil eraser, just work my way down each of the pins, a few swipes, just really want to make sure these are all clean. Um, since I was getting the full Nintendo logo, it's likely that the pins are fine, they look pretty good, but again, since I just got this game, I want to make sure that they're good. go give that a little bit of a wipe down with some alcohol I don't imagine this will make any difference but we're gonna try it all the same interesting. Let's try it again. I don't think that was all the way in. There we go. Yeah, so as expected, no change. Okay, next step, going to 
um, begin reflowing some of these connectors here. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can use a hot air station, such as what I have here. Um, but most people don't have a hot air station, so I'm going to do this with a soldering iron. Hopefully do it in a way that, um, as long as you have the proper basic soldering tools, you might be able to tackle this yourself if you have a similar issue. So I'm going to get everything set up here, and uh, I'll walk you through that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start reflowing the solder, which connects all of these chips. I'm going to do it one chip at a time and then test it so we can hopefully isolate what the problem is. Um, there's a couple tools that you will, well, one tool that you'll need and a couple uh, other supplies. So I'm going to show you everything that I'm using. Um, firstly, it is helpful to have some desoldering braid. You may need to clean up some solder. So I use MG Chemicals Super Wick. This is... Uh, rather narrow two millimeter wide braid. It's good for purposes such as this. Solder, 6040 solder is ideal for this type of work. There is other stuff you can use. Um, stuff I use, again, MG Chemicals. Uh, in this particular case, 0 0.032 inch diameter. Um, I can't remember what that is off the top of my head in millimeters. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty good solder. Using a good quality solder is always important. Um, you will want some flux. Now, what did I do with my flux pen? There it is. So I like using rosin flux. Um, you can use no clean flux as well, but you need to clean it, um, despite its name. I am running out of this no clean or this rosin flux and it is super old. So, eh, okay, there's a little left. I'll still be able to use that. Um, if not, no clean flux also works. Just make sure that you're cleaning the board properly afterwards. Um, and it also helps to have a pair of snips. The, this is good for cutting um, spent desoldering braid. Obviously, you will also need a soldering iron. So I have my Heiko FX888D and I have a chisel tip on it. Don't like using the pointed tips. They just don't work very well. Okay, so let's get this tinned, fluxed, and let's get started. So I got a little bit of solder here. Just going to tin the tip and go clean it off. You don't want a lot of solder on the tip. Just a little bit is usually sufficient. So I'm going to start with this square one here. So put down some flux on all four sides. Tin it just a tiny bit. Be careful when you're doing this. See these tiny little resistors and capacitors here? You don't want to hit it with your soldering iron as that will typically be enough to actually lift that clean off the board. And if you don't catch it right away and you loot, it's very easy to lose and that will ensure that this game doesn't work. So all I'm doing here, reheating the solder on these pins, making sure there's a good connection to the board. That should be good. There's some leftover flux on there, so I'm gonna just wipe it down. I'm actually gonna get a little glass with some alcohol in it for that. Okay, so just taking my toothbrush in the alcohol, just clean the flux off there. Let it dry quickly. Um, isopropyl alcohol will dry very fast, so you can kind of dab it with a paper towel, let it air dry for a few seconds, and it should be good to go very quickly. Let's slap it back into the shell, let's see if that did the trick. My guess is it's likely one of these two, but I like to start up top and work my way down. Okay. So Nintendo logo. Oh, check it out. And we are good. So got it first try. Nice. Make sure it actually boots into the game here.
Nice, perfect. So, luckily, looks like we got that one first try. So it was this little chip here at the top, MBC5, I believe that stands for Memory Bank Controller, and it allows you to basically read off, I guess, both of these chips. Um, I don't know all the technicals behind it, to be honest, so um, I'm not going to try and explain it too much, but um, long story short, one of the connections, one of these pins was not connecting to the board properly, so there was a broken solder joint. That can happen with these, seeing as how small these are. They were mass-produced um, using hot air for the most part in ovens, um, so if something wasn't on there just right, or it could be from sitting outside in the cold and then coming into the warm, that solder can crack as well. Um, but it does look like it does work now, which is awesome. I wasn't expecting that to uh, be such a quick repair. So let's just screw this back together. Give it one final test. I like to double test everything once I get the screws in. Because you never know. Say you pinch something, there's really not much to go wrong in these guys. But sometimes with bigger consoles, after screwing it together, you just want to do that double check to make sure. But... Game in, power on. <laughs> of course not. So, why is that? Well, I just had a bunch of alcohol on there, and evidently it must have completed a connection somewhere along the way. Um, so there is a bad connection on the board, but... The alcohol was simply temporarily connecting it, is my guess here. Um, where would that be? We've done this chip. I just cleaned around here. So my guess would be, next logical choice would be this board here, or this chip here. So we'll do the same thing. Flux it up. And flux is very important for doing this kind of work. Um, what the flux does is it helps just to make sure that all the solder goes where it's supposed to go. As long as you don't have too much, it's going to really guide it onto the pads. It's going to guide it onto the pins. It's going to make the work just so much easier. I would argue that if you don't have flux, you really shouldn't be doing this kind of work at all. So, tin the tip a little bit. Clean it a bit. Again, just a little bit, and we're going to work our way down these pins. There we go. That's a nice reflowed chip. Okay, so let's give that a little inspection here. Make sure that there's no bridges, and bridges being a uh, solder connecting these pins to each other, which should not happen. Flip it the other way. That looks pretty good. Got a tiny bit of solder on this square. That doesn't matter. Um, also do a quick look at this one. I looked myself, but I didn't put it on the camera, I don't think. So that one does look good as well. So let's uh, clean that flux off. We'll let it dry a little longer. Let's throw it in the shell, see what happens. got the garbly Nintendo, so clearly not a great connection. Sometimes that does happen when the shell isn't screwed in, as because it slides like this, you're not always fully in the system. So we're going to go in as hard as I can, turn it on, still bad. All right, let's double check this. Make sure there's no flux or anything on these pins. Okay. 
Okay, they were clean. I may have just had a little bit of something left on that pin, which isn't ideal. Okay, so we are booting into the game. But, so let's let this dry for a couple minutes. The back of it, yeah, there's a little alcohol still at the bottom, so we'll let this dry. Make sure that we are completely good to go, and then we'll test it again. Doesn't help to give it a little flip like this, just get a little air over it to help it with the evaporation. Um, like I said, isopropyl alcohol does evaporate very fast, so you should be good in less than a minute, typically. Okay. Still nothing. All right. So... I'm gonna do this chip next, and then failing that, I actually want to check some of these traces. There is a little, there's a couple areas, and I don't know if it picks up on camera, but it does look a little bit concerning, kind of around here. Could be a cause for concern. If there's a broken trace, we'll need to tr uh, follow that trace, find out where it goes, and may need to make a little bit of a jumper. The back side, Backside looks fine, um, but we'll give that a little bit of a further inspection if that final uh, chip reflow doesn't do the trick. So, same thing. Get my flux. Tin the tip. Clean it a little bit. That just helps to make sure that, that having a uh, clean tip um, really helps with reflowing it. Just make it so much easier. Little bit of solder on there. And... Okay. And then same thing to the other side. All right, so that looks pretty good. Once again, a little bit of a rubbing alcohol bath. Just really wanna try and get that spent flux off. Give the back of the board a bit of a wipe down. Try and dry it. And this time I'm just gonna wait, let's call it three minutes. Let it fully dry. There probably is some alcohol underneath these chips that gets trapped in there. And I'll be back in a minute. All right, so it's been about three minutes. I believe this is pretty dry. Just looking through the cameras, it can zoom a little better than my eyeballs. That looks good. Oh, maybe a tiny bit still under this chip, so. I'm going to give it another minute or two. What I'm seeing right under here. Kind of almost see a little bit of a shininess there. That's probably just some more rubbing alcohol that needs to come out, isopropyl alcohol. So I'll give it another couple minutes and then we'll give this a test. All right. So it's fully dry. Pop it in. Nintendo logo, good. Game is booting, good. So let's take it out. Again, just give it a little bit of a wave around. Um, like I said, it's been a few minutes, so if it's working, I would expect it would continue working, but just to be on the safe side. Nintendo logo. It's booting. All right. Well, let's screw it back together and make sure that it still works. So, it okay, screwed in. Nintendo logo. Come on, game. White screen, of course. Why, why wouldn't it do anything but...
Okay, now it works. Interesting. Well, I'm curious why it didn't work the very first time, so I'm going to give the pins one final wipe down just to make sure, and I do want to inspect these traces down here as well, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so I'm going to inspect with this jeweler's loop, um, just really get a good close-up. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up well, but you can really zoom in and see some of the imperfections on these traces. Just want to see if it looks like any of them are broken or not, or if there's just some marks and wear on them. So like this one right here, for example. Let's see if we can zoom in any for you. Right there in the middle, you see that brown mark at the top? So it looks like it's a tiny bit of corrosion almost. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my multimeter and just run some continuity checks. I'm not sure where this is going to terminate because it seems to go from here. It runs underneath the chip and who knows, probably goes into one of these vias under the board, but I'm just not sure. So let's do, I think what I'll do, count off how many from the left edge. Is that the one? Yes, it is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Flip it over. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And just going to test some of these vias. See if I... Okay, so it's fine. I was getting continuity to that via, so that is definitely good. Um, this other one that I'm a little questioning is right here. Let's see if we can see it on the camera. Right there, you see the little mark on there? It's probably fine, but once again, I would like to test that to be on the safe side. And this one, I think I can actually do it from this side of the board. So follow the trace. So I am getting continuity, but I was getting a little bit of a reading here. So there's a very small part where the solder mask has flaked away. Um, there's a couple things you can do to treat that. You can scrape it down and reapply a bridge. It hasn't really gotten to the point where it's broken yet. Um, there is replacement solder mask that you can also get to just kind of touch it up, um, which would be a good idea. I don't have any right now, so I'm probably going to order some, I think, just to be on the safe side. So I'm not going to do anything to it at this point. Um, but again, let's clean up the pins. Do one final test. Um, just give it a touch test. It doesn't feel sticky. Uh, leftover rosin will be a little bit sticky, so I think we're probably fine. But again, once again, just to make sure none of my work is impacting this negatively. Wipe the pins down. Use the dry end to try and get as much of that isopropyl alcohol off as we can. Paper towel. What did I do with my screw? Well, that's a problem. Oh, it's under the loop. There we go. Okay, one 
one final test. Let's see. Looks good so far. And booting into the game. So I'm confident that I think this is going to work just fine. Um, so like I had shown before, issue came from some of those chips on the board. Um, seems like there was just a bad connection from the chip to the board itself. So reflowing it with either a hot air gun or even a soldering iron is a pretty easy way to address that. And that can be done with most Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games, and many newer cartridge games as well. Um, I think the, just off the top of my head, N64 has some surface mount games like that. And even ones with through-hole chips can do the same thing. It's less likely that they're going to fail like that, but it's always worth a try. So hopefully you were, uh, hopefully you found this interesting and uh, someone's able to revive some of their own Game Boy games using this technique. I want to thank you a lot for watching. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button, make, hit the bell so you get notifications every time I upload new content. And once again, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next video.